I want to go over how to graph the rational function r of x equals x plus 4 divided by x plus 3 times x minus 1. Hold on one second. Lenny, stop your whining. Stop it. Good boy. All right. So first thing that we need to do is see if there's any vertical asymptotes. And if there are any vertical asymptotes, are there any holes in the graph? Second, we want to find out if, if there is a horizontal asymptote. And if there is, does the graph cross the horizontal asymptote or not? And then we're going to plot some relevant points to help us determine the shape of the graph. So to look at the vertical asymptotes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where my zeros are in the denominator. And I can see, if I look at the denominator right here, I've got x plus 3 and I've got x minus 1. Those are the factors in the denominator. So if I um, want to see where my zeros are, I just said x plus 3 equal to 0. I said x minus 1 equal to 0. And I find that my vertical asymptotes are at, hold on, let me just change the color here. They're at x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. Now, to determine if there are any holes, I see if any of the factors in the denominator can be canceled with any of the factors in the numerator. And if they can, those vertical asymptotes become a hole in the graph. In this case, there's no factor of x plus 3 in the denominator, nor is the factor, there a factor of x minus 1 in the denominator. So we have no holes in the graph. Next, I want to see what my horizontal asymptotes are or is, sorry, there can only be one. <clears throat> and to do that, I look at the degree, of the, the degree of the polynomial in the numerator, and here it's just x to the 1. And the degree of the polynomial in the denominator is going to be x times x, or x squared. Since the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is smaller than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator, I've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, to determine if the horizontal asymptote gets crossed by the graph or not, we need to take the, the, where the horizontal asymptote is and substitute that in for the left side of the equation, or r of x or y. So instead of writing r of x equals x plus 4 divided by x plus 3 times x minus 1, we're going to write 0 equals x plus 4 divided by x plus 3 times x minus 1. We'll multiply both the numerator and the denominator. I'll change color to show you what I'm doing. Times, we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator, and we'll get 0 times x plus 3 times x plus 1. And we'll multiply the right side by the same thing. And on the right side, the numerator and denominator cancel. We're left with x plus 4. And on the right side, 0 times anything is 0. So on the left side, we're left with 0. Now to solve, we simply subtract 4 from both sides, and we get that x equals negative 4. That means that does the horizontal asymptote cross the graph? Yes. It crosses at x equals negative 4. So we will have the point y equals 0, x equals negative 4 for where it crosses. So that's the information that we have so far. Now, I'm going to draw in the vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 3. Got a vertical asymptote there. And at x equals 1, got a vertical asymptote there. And we also have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. We know that the graph crosses the horizontal asymptote. Let's go with a different color. Right here. So we know a few things. We know that we've got three sections that we have to test. We have to test 
in this area here, to the right of the vertical asymptote, we have to test in between the two asymptotes, and we have to test to the left of the vertical asymptote. And we have to test one point in each region to see where the graph is, because to the right of it, it's either going to do this, or it's going to do this, because we know that the graph never crosses a vertical asymptote, and we know that it we've identified where it crosses the horizontal asymptote, which is only right there at x equals negative 4. So we're going to test always x-coordinates. We're going to test the x-coordinate to the right of x equals 1. We're going to test in between x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. And then we're going to test to the left of x equals negative 3. So we're going to test the following points. We're going to test x equals 2. We're going to test x equals 0, always an easy one. And we're going to test x equals negative 5. And this will identify where we're going to graph. So for x equals 2, I'll do this down here. Instead of saying rx equals x plus 4 divided by x plus 3, times x minus 1, we're going to say the y-coordinate equals 2 plus 4 divided by 2 plus 3 times 2 minus 1. And we, we're just really just deciding whether the y-coordinate is greater than or equal, greater than 0 or less than 0. So we get 6 divided by 5 times 1 which is 6 fifths. So we have the coordinate there of 2 comma 6 fifths, which is one, two, six fifths right about there. Since that's above the horizontal asymptote, the graph for this portion is going to look something like this. Then we test in between the two asymptotes. Which is going to be x equals 0. zero y equals 0 plus 4 divided by 0 plus 3 times 0 minus 1, which equals 4 divided by negative 3. So the y coordinate equals negative 4 thirds. So we get the coordinates. 0, negative 4 thirds, which is somewhere around here. Zero four thirds, right about there. That means the graph has to do something like that. Because we know that it cannot cross the horizontal asymptote again that we have identified where it crosses the horizontal asymptote, and it's not there. And we know that it has to approach the two vertical asymptotes as it becomes increasingly negative. We have one more area to test, and we'll do x equals negative 5. So we'll say y, the y-coordinate equals negative 5 plus 4 over negative 5 plus 3 times negative 5 minus 1, which is y equals negative 1 divided by, uh, that's negative 2 times negative 6, which is y equals negative 1 twelfth. And <clears throat> now, here's the tricky part about this. We know that it crosses, and we know that we have the coordinates negative 5, negative 1 twelfth. So that means we have negative 5, negative 1 twelfth is somewhere around here. So what's going to happen is that the graph is going to cross the horizontal asymptote. That means it has to increase in that direction. And then it's going to go back and approach the horizontal asymptote again.
because as we get increasingly negative in the x-coordinate, the graph is going to approach that asymptote. So that's what the graph will look like. I'm going to show you what it looks like exactly on Desmos graphing calculator, so bear with me while I do that. All right, I've got the Desmos version of the rational function r of x equals x plus 4 divided by x plus 3 times x minus 1. You can see I've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. I've got a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. A horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. You can see that as you go to the right of the vertical asymptote x equals 1, it starts up high it curves down, it starts up high and approaches the vertical asymptote as y increases. And as x increases, the, the graph approaches the horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. You can see that in between the two vertical asymptotes is as the graph approaches x equals 1, that vertical asymptote, the graph, uh, as the y becomes lower and lower it approaches that vertical asymptote and on the other side as the graph approaches the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3 the same thing happens as the graph as the y coordinate of the graph it uh, becomes lower and lower uh, it approaches the vertical asymptote you can see in the next section of the graph that as the graph approaches the vertical asymptote x equals negative 3 from the left as the y coordinate increases it gets closer and closer to that vertical asymptote you'll see that it crosses the vertical asymptote the vertical asymptote crosses the I'm sorry the graph crosses the horizontal asymptote at x equals 0 and y e uh, x equals negative 4 and y equals 0 and you'll see if you look closely that the graph dips below the horizontal asymptote and then turns around and approaches the horizontal asymptote again. So uh, if you refer back to the picture that I previously drew, it looks somewhat like this, uh, enough that it resembles it in all respects that we care about. So um, I hope that helps. You have a quiz next class, and uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them before the quiz. Math it up.